Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what an EMF reader is, how it works, and how it applies to ghost hunting. Now, I know the game Phasmophobia just came out, and I'm having a lot of fun playing that game, so click subscribe and like the video, and I'll be making more videos on Phasmophobia, as well as a PC build with a new NVIDIA GTX 3070 the graphics card that's coming out soon. So click subscribe and get ready for that. Okay, now on to today's video, how an EMF reader works. So let's first define what an EMF is. An EMF stands for electromagnetic force. So an electromagnetic force is basically just a force created by an electric current going through a wire that generates a magnetic field. And that field produces a force, which is typically called like the force field. This is the force field that uh, maps the forces at different areas around the field. So I have me some magnets here and these magnets are strong enough to create a magnetic field around them. Now you can't see the magnetic field obviously, but you can measure it. So if I bring the screwdriver closer and closer to the magnets, they'll start to attract and you start to feel a force on the screwdriver. And that's what an EMF is measuring, is this force on, so on the screwdriver. So look, the magnets are strong enough to hold the screwdriver up like this, when it's this close to the magnet, when they're basically touching. But if they're, may say, like this far away, the screwdriver would just fall down. Let's say right here. It'll go, it'll catch the screw. Look at that. That's what a magnetic field is. What an EMF is, is basically just that magnetic field produced by an electric current. So if you run an electric current through a wire, it'll actually create a magnetic field, just like these magnets right here. And that magnetic force can be measured with an EMF reader. So really, electric fields and magnetic fields are a combination of the same force. So that's why it's called an electromagnetic force or electromagnetic field, because they're really just two of the same forces, just from different sources. One's from a source of electric current, that's the magnetic field, and one is the source of electric charge, which is the electric field. But they're really two of the same thing. You've probably heard of electromagnetic forces before in the form of EM waves. And what an EM wave is, is basically just a light wave. So light is an electromagnetic wave. And what an electromagnetic wave is, is basically a propagation of the electromagnetic forces through space. These EM forces definitely depend on the geometry of the system you're looking at. So for example, these uh, like cylindrical magnets will have a different force field than say a bar magnet or a horseshoe magnet, some other type of magnet. And so when you're using an EMF meter, like in Phasmophobia, what that's really measuring is the magnetic field in milligauss. Now a milligauss is similar to how you would measure like a millimeter in a meter stick. So say I have a meter stick and then a milligauss is going to be a measurement of about like that much right there. That's going to be the scale of measurement that we're looking at. And one gauss is about the magnetic field of the earth. And yes, the earth creates its magnetic field. That's why we have magnetic north and south poles on the earth. So when you turn on that EMF reader, it actually calibrates itself to whatever electromagnetic field that it's in right now. So if I were to turn on an EMF reader, say right next to these magnets, it would calibrate itself so that its reading sets it by these magnets at zero. Kind of like how we call sea level, the zero elevation is at sea level, even though the earth goes below it, so there's actually elevation below it, and there's elevation above it, but we just call that our zero point for a reference frame. 
So when the EMF reader reads anything above its reference frame, that's when it'll start beeping or the lights will start going off. Every electronic device actually emits its own EMF, so its own electromagnetic field, because there's current passing through all these electronic devices, and it's all impossible to get around that, unless the electronic device is very well, well insulated, which... Most electro modern electronic devices are pretty well insulated because there are very strict guidelines now for how much EMF can leak out because we have these very sensitive communication signals like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, radio waves. All these forms of communication are sensitive to these electromagnetic forces. So now modern electronics are typically more well insulated than older electronics. So if you go into an older house, you're always gonna get a higher EMF reading no matter what electronics are on inside the house. As long as it's connected to the power grid and electricity is running through it, you will always find a higher EMF in these older houses. And even other things like your cell phone signal, your Bluetooth signal that's coming out of your phone, uh, any electronic devices that are on like cameras or recorders, those will also interfere with your EMFs reading uh, because they're going to produce EMFs themselves, and so your EMF reader will actually find those and measure them. So now let's talk about how this applies to ghost hunting. So in Phasmophobia, you use the EMF reader to look around the house and find where it goes off, and typically in that location is where you can conclude a ghost is. Now I'm not too sure exactly how a ghost can induce an electromagnetic force like that. I'm guessing somehow its spiritual energy is ionizing the air or something similar to that, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm not an expert in how ghost mechanics work. But if you have an EMF reader that goes off in a certain location where you know there's no electronic devices nearby, that's a signal that there is a ghost in that room. And now, like I said before, these EMF readers are pretty sensitive on the scale of electromagnetic force that's in the air already. Since the Earth is at one gauss and most of our electronic devices will always emit some sort of electromagnetic force on them, then there's going to be a lot of noise picked up by these EMF readers. So any sort of flashlight or camera equipment or cell phone that's on you, especially a cell phone, because a cell phone will always try to pull a signal or send out Bluetooth signals, and the EMF reader can always pick those up. So if you're ever in a room alone and you think there's no electric devices nearby, then just double check to make sure maybe your phone is on you, maybe there's electricity running through the walls or something, uh, if your flashlight that you're using while you're hunting ghosts, that could also be a factor in why there's an EMF reading going on. Many different things. Like I even said before, even light is a EMF wave. So potentially the EMF meter could pick up any traces of light. And that's not even just light in our visible spectrum. In the UV spectrum or the infrared spectrum is where also the light can be picked up. And in fact, the infrared spectrum of light is where we have radio waves and our cell phone signals at. And I'm gonna link below another video on how the Earth generates its own magnetic field so you can see how it's actually very sensitive and the Earth's own magnetic field can change at different locations and is somewhat random for the magnetic field. We can average the Earth's magnetic field across the entire globe to be at one gauss, but different locations depending on the thickness of the Earth's crust, or the temperature, or weather patterns, any sort of small difference can make a big difference in what sort of electromagnetic field the Earth is going to apply on you. And so your EMF reader can pick up on those real sensitive differences because it's measuring in these milligausses that we're using. So any small change in the Earth's own magnetic field can actually imply the change onto the EMF meter. So this is my conclusion, is that the EMF meter, while it is fun to use and fun to experiment with, I don't think it's a super reliable way of hunting ghosts. I think that there's too many variables in it, like your cell phone, other electronic devices like cameras, flashlights, recorders. There's like 
batteries or magnets that might be near you. The Earth's own magnetic field could be fluctuating around you. And so I think that using the EMF to find ghosts in real life isn't really a practical way of doing it. It's fun to do in video games like Phasmophobia though. And if you want to see more Phasmophobia content, make sure to like the video and subscribe because I will be putting out more videos explaining the science of Phasmophobia, the science of video games, and more science content in general. Alright, thank you for watching.